happy Mother's Day to you guys. I'm so excited. Oh, first of all, happy Mother's, to, Mother's Day to my mother-in-law. I know who's watching. And my mom. She may or may not be watching, but happy Mother's Day, moms. We love you. Well, God bless you guys. I'm so glad to be here. I'm blessed to be with my son. Um, we planned it. He said he would buy me some, some Air Forces if I wore them with him on stage. And I'm like, okay. This is a sacrifice for me because I like to dress up. I like to wear dresses and heels. So I'm wearing tennis shoes today with my jeans and tennis and my, t- not t-shirt, but blouse, you know. So I'm like, okay, I'll do it with you, baby. I'll wear some tennis shoes with you on stage. But before I get started, I know that all our, all our children left to the children's ministry, but there, there, are, there is some youth here. And so um, as we were praying, my prayer is that because there's youth in here, Um, And I used to be a youth, and I always bring this up. Remember God in your youth, okay? Remember God in your youth. And um, I believe that peak worship is is, is, is developing younger generations to be lovers of Jesus. Lovers of Jesus to know what it's like to be in his presence. And so you're in the right place. We're going to foster a relationship with Jesus, you youth that are in this room. So... Whatever that's worth for you guys, it should be worth a lot because it was by the Spirit of the Lord that I feel like that's what you needed to hear at this very moment. But because this place is going to, we're going to breed and we're going to, we're going to create children who love God from this house. So those of you who are, who are getting pregnant with babies, because that's how you grow a church. You just tell them to get pregnant. Come on, make some babies. And that's how you grow a church. Those children are in the hands of peak worship, obviously the parents, but we're going to, we're going to grow some, some God fearing kids in this house. Okay, it takes a village to raise children. And so um, we need to, if you're in the church, you know, pour, pour something into them, a value from the word. All right, without further delay, let's jump into the word. Yes. All right, we're, Josh was like, yes, let's get started. Awesome. We're starting with the verse Proverbs 1.8. This is all prefaced from this verse. Um, My son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother. Do not forsake the law of your mother. And so, so in essence, we're talking about, a lot of people don't like the word law, but it's just teaching and instruction. A mother teaches and instructs her child. A person who adopts children, a person who becomes a mentor, you are teaching and instructing them. So, so you, you may sit here today, you, you may feel like you don't have, a, you don't have children, you don't have a, you've never gone that, down that path, maybe that's never going to be in the future. But you are mentoring somebody, you are influencing somebody. So you can take something home with you. And if you're a man in this house, this is applicable to you. It's not just for a mother. You are an influence to somebody. And so I said all that to say that because a lot of people say, well, I'm going to a Mother's Day service and it doesn't apply to me. No, the word applies to everybody because this is what 2 Timothy says. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, it says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all into all good works. So all of the scripture is profitable to us. Mm -hmm. So don't dismiss anything that's being said today as as applicable to your life. All right, let's get started. All right, Joshua, go ahead. We're talking about moms. Number one, moms serve the family. Um, Proverbs 31, 15, A, she rises while it is yet, while it is yet night and provides food for her household. One day I asked my mom if she was just getting tired or just being tired of the labor of being a mom and her response was like she she does it because she loves me and she wants to provide for me and that's her joy for being a mom and she does multiple things for me she takes me to school she packs lunch lunch for me she plans or preps dinner and just looking at all this, it's like, do you ever get tired of doing all this? Because it's like a daily basis, you do this for me. But she responded, I I love doing this for you, which is loving and amazing that she just keeps on doing it every day, even if it might be hard, but she still does it because she loves me. Yeah. And, and we can relate to that, moms. We will, we will be in the hustle and the bustle, and we do it because we love our kids. We love, even, 
even when you give of yourself to others, you do it because you genuinely love those people in your life. And as a kid, you can see that love. Yes, and that recently happened. We were driving to a piano lesson, and he looks at me. We were just in the hustle and the bustle. Get home from school. Got to go to piano lessons. Got to rush back to the north side. And he looks at me. He goes, do you ever get tired of being a mom? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> sometimes I do. But I, I do it because I love it. I love to do this. This is what I was born to do. This is what God has called me to do. And does the body get, does the flesh get tired sometimes? Yeah, I'm sure every mom can say, I'm tired. And any mom that says that they're not tired is a liar because <laughs> we get tired. We're human beings and we do get tired, but we do what we, we do, what we do because we love, we genuinely love and we give of ourselves. And so um, it, is, it is important that our children see us do, not to, to burn at both ends of the candlestick, but it's to, to serve. We're not just serving him or our children, but we are, with, there's other people in the mix too. You know, we serve others. So we're teaching, we're teaching our children to serve. And when we give of ourselves and, and the word, I was explaining to Joshua that the word, our, our, our Bible that we use, that we carry is our framework as to how to be a mother, how to do what we do. And so, um, Everything, and we always refer to Proverbs 31 woman, the Proverbs 31 woman, how, how virtuous she is, and all that's true. And sometimes we can be boastful. Well, I'm the Proverbs 31 woman. I cook, I clean, I, I, I clean the toilets, I do this, I do that. There's nothing wrong with delegating. But, you know, you can boast about everything that the Bible says you are, and it's not for boasting. It is to give God the glory, ultimately, because he gives you the strength mm -hmm. to do that. But I think God painted a picture for us because he knew that we were capable. It's interwoven in our nature to be giving, to do, to love, to un with unrestrained sometimes, sometimes to our own detriment. And we have to know how to, you know, bring boundaries in. We're not talking about boundaries today, but, you know, know your boundaries, obviously. But Proverbs 31.27 says, she looks well to the ways of, of her household. She, that means she's she's overseeing. She's looking as to what is well for her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Do you remember what idleness meant, baby? It leads to a to vice, which is immoral or wicked behavior. Yeah. So we went down a whole rabbit trail of being idle. You know, sometimes um, we're found in seasons where there isn't much going on in our lives and we're like, what's really happening? You know, everything's quiet. Life is good. We're experiencing the blessing of God. Don't, don't let that quiet season, that's not the right word I want to use, but um, manipulate you in the sense, oh, all is good. That's when the enemy wants to come and get you. <laughs> he's like everything. So he, he, he sees you. Everything's peachy with her. Everything's good. But we should never let our guard down, meaning the idol is a place where you just sit back and I'm just smooth selling here. Lazy. Lazy. Um, it, it's an opportunity for the enemy to creep in or you open doors when there is a spirit of idleness, when you are not about the father's business, when you're not about being well, not well, but seeking the well-being of your home. Come on, we can think about maybe some people in our life where we're, they're so engulfed, because I know it's not any of us in here. We're so engulfed about, in, about other families. Look at so-and-so and so, and we're not even worried about our own. Let's just be worried about own, our own home. Let's, let's worry about what's happening in our home. Don't worry about sister so-and-so, sister, sister, and sister so-and-so. I almost said sister so <laughs> Sister so-and-so's house, worry about your home. You're responsible for your home. I'm worrying about mine, and you worry about yours, and that will keep you from eating the bread of idleness from when there's nothing. There, trust me, there's enough things going on in your home that you don't have to worry about other people's stuff. There's a lot of things that can happen in our home. Joshua mentioned, because um, he's in basketball, his basketball team motto is God first. You want to say it? God first, family second, student third, and athlete fourth. Yes. So God is first. So it, as a mom, God is first in my home. I'm checking for the well-being of my home because I'm responsible before the Lord as a mother. And then family to, second. 
Say that again. And then family second. Yes. So I have to be right with God first, and then my family. I'm attending to my family. But yeah, if you honor God first, yes. then you don't need to worry about honoring your family because you're already honoring your family by like good behavior and just acting out of what God has told us children to do. Mm-hmm. Behave mm-hmm. so you can live a long life. Mm-hmm. I'll take you out. The only commandment with the promise. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I I study from the Dake Bible, and one of the comments that he wrote there, it says, she manages her household with economy and discretion. Her children behave well, and none keep company with persons of unclean and immoral habits. She instructs her house in practical religions, which is, you know, Jesus at the center, and industry, <clears throat> and sets an example of godliness, diligence in business, and re- untiring improvement of mind, soul, and body. So she's not physically, you, you know, using her body to care for her home. She's also attentive as to what's happening to her children. And if you if you read this, if you hear this, she is ensuring that her kids are keeping good good friends, mm-hmm. right? See, parents, moms, you should know who your, your children's friends are, okay? Because I don't know if, if you grew up this way. I grew up this way. My dad always said, show me your friends, and I'll show you who you are. Mm-hmm. I grew up that way. So if I know what your friends do, I know what you're going to be doing or how they behave. And so... The mom is also not just attentive to the daily affairs of the actual business of the home, but she's attentive to what's happening in the spiritual life of the child Mm -hmm. as to how he is being diligent with his mind, his soul, his spirit. So it's not just services, but it's also spiritual as to how we are doing that. Let me see. Oh, I want to make sure I say that. As we serve, it doesn't dismiss you kids doing services, okay? Let's get that right. Kids, you need to serve in your home. Mm -hmm. Your mom is leading by example. Fathers are leading as well, but we're talking about moms. You are to serve as well. You are creating minimes of what you do. So if you're sitting on the couch eating bonbons all day, that's what your kids are going to do. You know, you're modeling that. And so (laughs) I got a thumbs up. Yeah, so you have to model that. You can't expect your children to behave different than what you do. You have to exemplify, exemplify that first. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> do you want to comment on any of that, baby, before we go to topic two? Well, yeah, the mom is the example when it comes to the children. Um, getting Coming away with serving. Mm-hmm. Um, the mom is an example. When it comes to that, yes, amen. Point number two. Moms serve others. Proverbs 31.20 says, She opens her hands to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. In addition to when I asked my mom about being a mom and if she gets tired, she said, I'm not just a mom. I, I also like serve others and I have other roles as well. And I see her serve others along with my dad and just helping at the church maybe or if it's even just praying for someone if they're dealing with a stronghold in their life and or like give to people who are in need. And not just physical items of helping at the church, but spiritually as well. And like praying for people at the church Maybe if they have a strong cold or just unite with them in prayer. And they give their time into serving others. Like if it is just prayer, they will they will go and pray. And how I said the mom is an example mm-hmm. for their kids to come away with serving. And yeah. also the dad as well. Yeah. And that is where the kid will learn how to serve and if even if they do it at a young age, just starting off simple, maybe praying with a friend. Yes. That that goes a long way as well. So, yeah. Very good. Yeah, so 
in addition to serving the home, we should also have a character of serving people outside your home. Mm -hmm. You know, I recently did a video on um, to when you when you are serving God, you want to be able to persevere and persist and endure. And I made a comment. Do it for the friend or the person that's watching you, not that you're serving God for them. But I, rec I didn't recant on that statement, but I, I really processed that after I did the video. We should be serving God for others mm -hmm. because Jesus did it for us. So we should do it for the generations after us. I should, I should, should not give up because I know there's someone, their relationship is, and I, I don't want to put so much focus on that, but their relationship is contingent on me pushing. And it's, it's an act of service to do it for others. And so um, it's important that the children see the, the mom or the father serve other people outside your circle because we can be selfish and just serve our own family. Let us go have a big steak on a Friday night. Why not, why not bless a family with a big steak? I'm not saying that's what you need to do, but that's getting self off the forefront of your mind and putting others first, you know, um, it is counterintuitive if if we are um I want to make sure I say this right. If we say we are to serve, but we don't serve other people, you know, it because the two statements are opposite. They, they don't work together. If you if you can't love God and not serve, serve other people. If Jesus was the ultimate one that came to serve, we are to serve God and and, and serve others. So we have to take inventory. Are we serving others? Because then our kids will learn how to serve others. You know, I watched a video on Facebook. He mentioned the whole praying thing where a kid had, had a bad headache in a classroom. And you know what the kid offered? Prayer. And there's a picture. The teacher took a picture of the student laying hands on the kid and praying over him. He learned that from somewhere. That didn't just happen from, like, didn't drop out of the sky. He learned that from somewhere. So I don't just pray over my children. I can pray over somebody else. I can pray over somebody else that I come in contact with. That is modeling serving others. Because the scripture says, Joshua read it, she opens her hand. She opens her hand. It also means to spread out. You're not just keeping all the good stuff to yourself, to your children. You're spreading it out. You're spreading the love. You're spreading the love. It's like sharing God's word. That Sharing God's or word. Like I said, starting off simple um, and just praying for a friend or yes. just someone close in your family. Yes, exactly. Let's see. When you sow into someone who is in need, you sow a seed. You know, we, we try to exemplify where there's a need, you help if there's a need. And, and we try to meet the need if we're able to. And we share with Joshua that when you serve others and you give when someone's in need, you may not get in return what you sowed into them, but your harvest will come. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that when you, when you sow, there is a harvest. And so you may not get the return from that person, but your harvest will come because when you give, you give as unto God first. They're the recipients of it, but God returns the harvest. And so he sees all that. Uh, okay. Point number three. Moms protect. Since I can remember, my mom has always told me, I carried you in my, in my womb for 10, um, in the womb for 10 months. And I remind him, I carried you in the womb for 10 months. Go give me a glass of water <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> and she protected me while I was in there. And she tells me she sang to me while i was there and she not only care um cared for me then but when i am sick too like if it's in the middle of the night you will care for me when i'm sick and yeah. you don't want me to just not have a good sleep you will be there for me if it's even giving me medicine at 1 a.m in the morning mm -hmm. and she's there for me mm -hmm. and even though um and she also protects me when she disciplines me even though I might not like it it's helping me in the future to live a better life and live a better lifestyle pleasing to God yes. and that's how the mom can be a good example of just disciplining 
um, yourself, even if you just do something and no one's watching you, you can still like know next time not to do that because you learn from your mom that that's wrong and that's just protecting you to have a better future and live a lifestyle pleasing to God. Amen. Amen. Do you want to read the verse? Um, Proverbs twenty two fifteen says, Wickedness is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline drives it far from him. My mom disciplines me, and it is a form of protection. It's a form of love and kindness. It discipline discipline makes me and just stores hold of a better future, maybe a better job for me in my future. Just know how to act, or even if it's just um being a teenager and hanging out with friends, you like know how to act and what friends to find come on and yes that's protecting me that's protecting my future yes just how I act absolutely yes so Proverbs 16 9 says the heart of man plans his way but the Lord establishes steps so so I look at it this way these children are adults in kids bodies Think about that for a minute. The children that God has blessed you, they're adults. They're just in kids' bodies right now. They're in a different developmental stage, but they're going to be adults one day. So so the goo goo gaga is just for a moment, but they are going to be men and women. And so it is up to us, it is up to us to care for them and steward them so they know the issues of, like, the, the, the hard issues of life. We can't. I can't treat my 10-year-old like he's never going to go into the world. Mm -hmm. I can't isolate him thinking he's never going to step into a world and see something that he shouldn't see. Because there's going to be challenges in life where you're going to have that hardship in your life and you ought to know how to act during it. And like how moms protect, you've already protected me by disciplining me to have a better future. So I know what to do in a situation if I have a hardship like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think sometimes we, um, we, the word discipline, it sounds a little harsh, but I was just having a conversation with somebody the other day and discipline is good in the home. You need discipline. The Bible talks about it, but discipline without relationship is not good. You need both. You need a discipline and relationship. So it is not just about you, the do's and don'ts, They're the do's and don'ts along with a loving safe haven, along with, hey, I messed up, and they know that they can come to mom or dad, you know, when, they, when you mess up. That's a form of protection that they feel a, 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 it's a place where it's safe. They're protected even when they mess up. And they know no matter what, if something does happen, they can go to their mom or dad just if they need prayer or just talk about what just happened. So like it's a trusted place, a trusted mm-hmm. environment, right? It's a good built relationship between yes. those two. Yeah. And sometimes discipline still happens, but with relationship. Yes. Right. There's a relationship at the center of it. And relationship is good because the kid can know that the they're not trying to hurt you. They're not just giving you tough love because they like being upset at you they're giving you a better future yes and the kid has to know that they're not trying to hurt you that's right yeah yeah you just re you you reinforce that i am protecting you because i love you Mm -hmm. i'm disciplining you because i love you yeah yes all right let's see so god has entrusted us with stewardship of these children okay point number four Moms encourage a, re- a relationship with Jesus. Um, First, Chronicle, First Chronicles 1611, it says, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Mom, my mom has always told me you can never escape the presence of God. It's, it's always there. Everywhere you go, his presence is with you, beside you, all around you, within you. And he 
it's up to me to include him in my life. My mom's not forcing me to just believe in Jesus. It's my choice to believe in Jesus, and she's just leading me to the right choice. She's just leading me to the right answer. And my mom always gives me wisdom, and so does my family. And I try to live a, a God-fearing life of what they've told me. I, You can't just go to church and not apply what That's right. they Come on, told preach. you. you got to take the information and use it in your life. And that same goes same for, like, what your parent has told you. you got to use it in your life so you know what to do during, during a hardship. And just because um, my mom prays does not mean I don't need to pray, too. I I can still follow what she does, even though it I might not want to sometimes, or I might not want to have a time of worship. I might want to be on the computer or something, but I need to do that. She's just leading me to the right choice mm -hmm. of choosing God, God and building a great relationship every day. And that's mm -hmm. just the part of being a good mom, leading your children to the right choice and to succeed in life. Amen. That's really good, baby. He's also my walking calculator. <laughs> I couldn't do math at the register at Publix the other day. I'm like, 12 times 8, mom. He goes, mom, that's 84. I'm like, praise the Lord. <laughs> I couldn't do the math yeah, at the register. Um, 12 times 7 is, or 12 yeah. Times, yeah, 12, 12 times, times 7. 7, yeah. And I'm like, let me take out my calculator. I don't know what 12 times 7 is. And he's like, that's 84. Hello. I'm like, I'm sorry that you know how to do math. Anyway, So we seek the Lord in his strength and, and seek his presence continually. So I'm, the mom teaches the child that, um, yeah, I, I remind Joshua all the time when we go through just conversations, daily conversations about choices, about friends, what we should be doing when we obey, when we disobey. And I tell him, you need to go talk to Jesus because the behavior right now, I can pray for you all day long, but you need to go pray. Mm -hmm. You need to go spend some time with Jesus. You need to be like immersed in his presence because your behavior right now is not good. And so that fosters them knowing how to go to the presence of God. When I read this verse, seek the Lord in his strength, seek his presence continually. We should be teaching our children how to seek his presence on their own, mm -hmm. not contingent on mommy and daddy. And Dan and I always say this a lot. When mommy and daddy leave, you know, you're going to have to know how to pray. And, 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 and if that scares them when we say that. We don't say, like, leave the earth. Just when you leave us and you leave our home, when, when you get married, you're going to have to know how to do that on your own. You can't call mom and dad and, hey, how do I do this? You're going to have to already know how to do that. Mind you, well, we're, we're, they're going to be there for you. But we start this at a young age. We teach them, hey, you need to go talk to Jesus because your behavior right now, you need some Holy Spirit to help you with this. And as children, we got to learn how to do this because, yes. like you said, we, you can't always just call your mom and dad when something happens or something pops up in your when life. When you're at school and mm -hmm. you have a situation in front of you, you need to know how to decipher that. And mom and dad's not available on a phone. And you have to know what – you have to learn how to discern what is you? What do you feel God telling you? And you need to go with the gut, the, the instinct that God is telling you on the inside. And so I, I said all that because we need to develop children who love Jesus, who know how to be in his presence. Um, and it, it also, it, it, it develops children that are not codependent. Mm -hmm. We make them strong men and women of God. They're not dependent on something or someone to validate them. They're dependent on what God says about them. I know how to go to God's word about what God says about me. I know how to go to his presence when I fall. See, sometimes we, we don't let this environment, this home environment, be a safe place to fall. We fall. Adults fall. Children are going to fall too. Mm -hmm. We're the flesh. We're, we're, we're in we're the flesh. flesh. Come on. He's being so spiritual today. We're in the flesh. We're in the flesh. <laughs> That's right. This flesh gets us in trouble. That's right. So our children need to know that there's a place where they can fall. Why not in the place of mom and dad, they can discipline, they can correct and lead them in the right way because there's a relationship there. It protects so, their future. Yes. We're protecting you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, 
So we don't want them codependent. We want them to be God-fearing, have a reverential fear to, to look for affirmation in that presence. Your strength, your peace, your confidence comes from God, not from people. It, it all is pointing back to Jesus. Third John 1, 1, 4 says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. They, my mom is a praying mother. And since I can remember, I mean, my, I grew up from a migrant family. My parents worked up north and on down south, just follow the seasons, picking fruit. And I remember when we would go to work with my mom and dad on the weekends when we weren't in school, we in Florida, we were we would pick oranges at 9 a.m. I mean, we were already out in the fields probably by 6:30 or 6 in the morning already working. But we were kids. I remember my mom going to underneath orange trees every day, well, every Saturday at 9 a.m. And that was her prayer time. And she'd be knelt on her knees under a tree praying. And I remember seeing that as a kid, but that was her lifestyle. She modeled that. And so, and that's a good, um, example of showing what the moms should be doing. Yes. And also that's a good example for the children to see just so they can know what to do during a hardship or just have a daily basis um, with um, God in their daily life. Yes. And to have that just, even if it's 15 minutes of time of praying, yes. that's still a model for their for the children to see. And it just builds a better relationship with God. Yes. Amen. Good job. Um. It is a joy for moms when, when they sit back and they know that their children are serving the Lord. And maybe you have children in this room and they're not serving God. Keep on praying. Keep on being that praying mother. Some of us are here because we have praying grandmothers. You know, keep on praying for that person. Maybe God has placed somebody in your life and he placed you in their life strategically because no one is praying for them. You pray for them. You be their mentor. You show them how to pray. You show them how, how to have a relationship with Jesus. Because here's the thing. Ed education's good. Academics, athleticism, aspirations, they're all good. But without a relationship with Jesus, all that's empty. Mm -hmm. It's empty. Mm -hmm. It's great. It's great certificates on the wall, great medals, great resume. But all of that is it's, it's empty and hollow without a relationship with Jesus. And if you don't have the relationship and you do have all like the medals and that and you're not giving the glory to God, that's that's nothing because it's it's really none of you. It's just God working through you. Yes. Come on, preach. I just need to get off stage and just let you preach. Very, very good, baby. And we have one last point and that is our fifth point. Mom should be praised. Proverbs 31 through 28 on um, Proverbs 31 28 through 31 says her children rise up and call her blessed her husband also and he praises her many women have done excel excellently but you surpass them all charm is deceitful and beauty is vain but a woman who fears the lord is to be praised give her of the give her of the fruit of the, her hands and let her works praise her in the gates Beautiful. Um, and moms should always be honored for what they do because just as a child, you can see this every single day. Like, even if it's your grandma that you see do this, it's still a model that you can use in your life. And for the response she came back when I asked her that question, she said she does this because she loves me. And she does this every single day because she loves me. And we should honor moms, not only moms, but God too, by behaving. And doing that is praising and honoring the Heavenly Father while honoring your parents. And we don't need to worry about honoring your family if we're already honoring God. Because honoring God and honoring what his said, he says is like honoring his commandments. And one of his commandments is honor your mother 
and your father, and you will live a long life. The only commandment with a promise. Amen. And if you do that, it's going to pay off in your life. Amen. You're, you're going to know what to do during hardships. You're going to know how to behave if your friend does something to you. You're going to know how to forgive. And just you're going to know the steps of how to succeed and how to have a better relationship with God in your life on a daily basis. Amen. Amen. Very good, baby. Very good. Yes, so we should be praising our mothers. We should be honoring them. Um, I love that. It says, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Um, any woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Because if you walk in fear, that's the beginning of wisdom, right? And so I think we have a bunch of wise women in this room. We fear the Lord. And honor that woman. Like, I love how you just exemplify in your lifestyle a form of godliness. A godly woman. Um, that whole chapter wraps it up with that part. Because, and, and, and I just said it, the beginning of wisdom is to fear God. Mm -hmm. We do it because we fear God. I, I'm resp I have been given such stewardship over him. And I do it because I, I, I do it every day to the best of my ability. Do I fall? Yes. Do I get tired? Yes. Do I yell? Yes. <laughs> um, um, but I try to steward it to the best of my ability before the Lord, you know, because I'm accountable to him for this. Because they're doing all this for the Lord, yes. not just for me, but for the Lord. Yes. And doing that is making the Lord happy. And when we behave and honor our parents, that's also making the Lord happy. It, it's what he tells us to do. It's his word that wants us to just give thanks for our parents and always have gratitude. Never take what you have for granted because they've blessed you and done so many things for you. And it's just a big model for you to see what to do in your future and what she has what my mom has done for me and what my dad has done for me are amazing things and they they just always do for me and they're doing it out of love and yes sometimes you might yell at me <laughs> sometimes all the time <laughs> and sometimes you might fall but you're doing it to the best of your abilities, and that's what matters, that you're honoring God and pleasing God. Yes. One of the things that I I have to go to him all the time is, I'm sorry I yelled at you. I'm so sorry. I've never parented before. I've never been a mom before. <laughs> and um, I, you have to show them that you can go to them and ask for forgiveness too, you know, because we're just humans. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, oh my God, I, I acted so horrible with my son. I need to go and apologize. That in itself is a model to go knowing how to humble yourself, knowing that you don't have it together. You just messed up. You go and apologize. And it could humble your children too to go yes, to their it parents. Yes, shows humility, yes. Or just even if, if it's a friend you're going to. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we pray that you were blessed this morning. We pray that you felt the presence of the Lord um, as we were prepping. I remember there's a song by Brandon Lake. Brandon Lake is, it, I think it's called Little Talk with Jesus. Um, if you hear the song, it sounds very country. It's very good. Um, it's a like an acoustic sound, and he talks about his praying. He was a praying. He's a praying man because of his praying mama. And then he is in his room praying, and his 15-year-old son comes in, and his son's like, oh, I see that you're busy. And the son says, oh, no, 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 you couldn't have come in a better time. He lets him in. He goes, let's pray together. So it's not about modeling. You, you get what you get, right? So, and it's not to put the pressure on. It's to hold us as adults responsible. Hey, we gotta we gotta refine some areas of our life because yeah. everything we do, we're 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 modeling it. And yeah, um, you might think, oh yeah, but that's a 
a dad and how my mom read at the start of this message she read second timothy three through three chapter three sixteen verse through verse seventeen and this Uh, word just a whole bible is for every single person out there just every everybody no matter what happens you can go and rely on this but as having parents you're gonna learn from them and just you got to know that they're just trying to help you and even if you don't want to pray and just have a praise and worship for like 15 minutes it's still a good it's still good building a relationship with god the person that created every single one of us which is amazing to have because you can know what to do in your future you can know how to act if a friend does something or just anything any hardship comes in your life you can know how to what to do and who to come to for sure amen I hope that you enjoyed the message today, and I hope that you gave your heart to Jesus Christ. And if you're here and you have not, and you would like to right now, all you have to do is ask for forgiveness of your sins and receive Jesus into your heart as Lord and Savior, and you are saved and set apart. That's all it is. And I want you to email me. I want you to email me so I can be praying with you, that I can be believing with you, that we can equip you, that we can stay in contact with you because I want to welcome you to the family. And while you're here watching right now, make sure you check us out at Peak Worship and make sure you get involved with all of our social medias. That means you like us, you follow us, check everything out about us so you can get plugged in. Amen. And we will see you next time.